So it's machinery moving day number two, and we're taking all the remaining machines except for one. There was one machine that I just couldn't deal with anymore. We're leaving it behind, and it's just not up to the Pearson standard. You might be surprised as to which one it is. So the machinery movers are really good at um, kind of tying everything up, making sure we have such beautiful weather here, there's no need to tarp. But I wanna run a quick experiment. Maybe if you've seen our uh, card video about these tool tags and these little cards that we print out, I'm gonna leave this on, this is magnetically mounted. I'm gonna see if they stay on the machine for the drive. We can always print new ones, but curious if it makes it over there. A little fun little Easter egg for the guys. Okay, so pretty exciting. Both trucks got over here just fine. They're out back, they're starting to get the forklifts off. Give you a quick uh, rundown of what we're doing. We have the VF2C. That machine was originally paired with the robot, but now we're gonna pair it with the VF2B. It's our oldest machine, has a 20 station umbrella tool changer. We don't need more than about 16 tools for what the robot has been doing, namely making pallets and op zero work for our pro pallet systems. Behind me will be the VF4. That's primarily our vacuum chuck machine. So these two machines will be right next to each other. Our panel is marked out here on the wall. We have the overhead pipes, the big double lot wire that will go down to the switch, then transformer, then panel, and then branch out overhead. So this manufacturing cell behind me will be off one transformer and one panel on this side of the shop. All the other stuff over there will be on a second transformer, second panel. Um, the machine that goes down here will be our VF2A, which is a and kind of an older machine. It's our second oldest machine. It has a 24 station side mount tool changer. All the VF2s these days come with a 30 as a, kind of a standard. No, it's an add-on, but it's the smallest one you can get. And then we have it taped off, but we don't own that machine yet. Another VF2. It's gonna be part of the process of developing more automation equipment for the second division of our company, Pearson Automation, where Pearson work holding now. We have the VAC watch as kind of like a first initial offering for the automation side. And then over here, we're gonna have a, a one grinder that we own right now, and then a second grinder for more capacity. And then behind me will be a Doosan 2600 LSY2 with an IAMCA bar feeder. Um, and you also notice our existing Doosan Lynx 220 LSY. We've also got a spot taped off over there for another bar feeder. Like my friend John Saunders says, a bar fed lathe is about as simple of an entry point to automation as you can get. So we're excited about all these, uh, uh, all the things that are going on. Um, I gotta get out there. They're taking machines off trucks. Catch you in a minute. That last measurement, 10 foot, 11 inch, and 11 sixteenths on both. 
both corners. I mean, that's absolutely perfect, insane. What a day. So we have officially moved all of the machines into place, got them aligned. Uh, the guys have done a few more truckloads with their personal vehicles. We rented a flatbed, 20 foot flatbed for the bigger, heavier stuff. Things are just coming into place. If you saw the old place, and we'll go over there in a minute, um, it's, it, it, suddenly it looks bigger and this place looks a lot smaller, although this is almost double the floor space. So it's weird how that happens. We've actually talked about how funny it seems that the machines seem smaller because we have you know really tall ceilings now, whereas before we had about 12, 14, and these are closer to like 18, 20 foot ceilings. So we're just getting used to it. Um, we're, we're kind of spread out. Uh, we have a general pro, uh, layout of production and how things are gonna flow. I'll cover that in a future video, make sure you're subscribed. But in that video, I'll show you how when you are working on a product or a specific component, you're no farther than two machines apart. So a guy would not be over here at one VF2 and then go over to the MX at the other side of the shop. Um, along the same lines, you wouldn't have a guy that specialized in lathes coming over here to the mill side. Now, everyone's cross-trained. We know how to run both machines around here. But ideally, you stay in your cell, whether it's by machine type or component that you're running. Um, we have product line managers. So Alex, our smart back line, uh, John, our pro and mini line. Um, we have Juan that knows every aspect of the Rotovice production. And so we've laid it out that way. Once we get power and air hooked up, we'll give you a, a kind of a tour of that. One thing I wanted to, to highlight, so right behind me, that is a DI tank. So DI is deionized water. What you have to do is, especially if you have hard water, we have decent water. It's not soft by any means here in Southern California, but you would run your city water through these tanks and then it'll go to the drum where you mix it with a proportioning uh, mixer and then into the machines. So what we're gonna do with this one is we're gonna take the DI tank. We're going to plummet, hard plummet into our um, water lines that go into the shop. Then when these tanks get exchanged, the two valves close it, unscrew, um, the delivery driver will exchange them, hook it up, charge the lines, and then we'll go to different areas of the shop. Now we've plumbed it for two different areas right now. So we have copper pipe behind me and that'll go down to a drum. Same thing with that side of the shop that will have its own uh, DI line running to it with a coolant drum. So we'll have multiple drums, which is okay. When one drum runs out, we just have another one delivered. Uh, when we go to buy both drums, we actually get a quantity discount when we buy two or more drums. So it not only eliminates waste, but it's more cost effective that way too. Now, we're gonna head over right now to the old shop and I'm gonna show you which machine we left behind and why. Let's head on over. And the machine that we are not going to take with us is the ST30Y. So the question is uh, why? I mean, we put a lot of work into learning this machine. Um, of course, the expense of purchasing the machine about a year and a half ago. And then we've done a, a couple uh, videos for you guys, a card up here and in the description below if you wanna check out what uh, these machines are all about, especially the rebooted version of the ST line. So what it came down to was the ability to walk away for extended periods of time, knowing that if something does go wrong and things do go wrong, tools wear, parts don't get ejected, all those things. Could we walk away from this confidently? Uh, no. Did it make great parts? Yes. Like I think I said in some of the other videos, I was happily surprised at how accurate this machine was, especially for its size. I think Haas totally nailed it when it comes to um, just the, the, the new castings, the thermal compensations. I mean, I was really happy with it. Uh, the intuitiveness of the bar feeder was great, but uh, a few of the things that I just couldn't get over is the noise. When you have a bunch of other machines running 
and they're all of kind of like the same frequency. Um, this one just howls and I don't know, man, I just, it, you could always tell when this was on and the general consensus in the shop was like, uh, could be quieter. I don't understand why it's this loud. So that's the human factor, which we definitely take in, into consideration. And this machine, it is in its final hour of running parts. We're making our new style of bed clamps. So these clamps here, they go around the perimeter of our vacuum chucks and our pro and mini pallet systems. And it makes this round part with axial and radial milling beautifully. I mean, it is just an absolute beautiful part, but it parts it off and it drops it into this, what I've said before, is just a big dumb box. Now it worked just fine when we had smaller parts where we could run it overnight and we would come into hundreds and hundreds of small parts that were, were uh, um, main spindle part, sub spindle, axial uh, drilling, I'm sorry, radial drilling along the, uh, the profile of the part. Uh, it was great and a small diameter, it didn't really wear tools, but um, when we get to the two inch and larger parts, uh, that's where you want the reliability to just be rock solid. Now I did buy a probe with this machine. The thought there is during the day, you run it, you have lots of people around. If they hear a bump or a crash or something, you can come save it. Um, at night, when there's no one around, you may just blast through a, an insert and then come in the next morning and the turret is wedged up against a bar sticking out with a bunch of tool holders that are just nubs Okay, so that's that's worst case scenario. The probe would have been able to do what what, what the, the Dusons do natively, and that's part cutoff detection. So the Dusons, what they'll do is the subspindle will grab, it'll part, and then it will measure the load as the B axis retracts. So when it retracts, if it feels uh, a, a, some pressure, it'll say that the part did not get cut off properly. Haas doesn't have that. That's a software thing. I would love for them to implement that in their new machines. Also, we had um, these same parts, we jammed a chip in the collet and when the ejector, well, okay, first of all, this doesn't have a subspindle ejector, the Dusons do. When our homemade ejector didn't have enough force to push it out, well, guess what? It tried to go pick up the next part and you have a B-axis crash. The Dusons have not only a part ejector, they have air blow off and they have through subspindle coolant washout to get chips out, really pesky chips. And also when the ejector goes to push the part, if it doesn't reach its maximum extension, it will alarm out the machine saying part not ejected. So those are two things that we couldn't walk away with full confidence overnight. Um, also, I considered getting a roto, roto rack from Royal Products. We would have had to cut a, a square, like a rectangle hole in here and run a conveyor to an accumulator uh, table. For the expense of, I think it was maybe 13 to $15,000 for that. And then the insulation and its own power source. I just had to make the executive decision that this wasn't the right machine for us moving forward. Is it a great machine? I definitely think so. Like I said, it's accurate, it's intuitive. It's the Haas control, really easy to program. Our posts from Fusion just I mean, there's no hand editing. It was, it was fantastic. But is it the machine that you can confidently walk away from overnight? No. So there's been other times in business, um, card to our robot series, where the first time I bought a robot, I realized that eh, it's not as easy as making coffee like they demonstrate in the videos and the trade shows, things like that. Um, this machine, it's great, but you know, just like the robot, my first robot, you just learn from it you sell it, you recoup as much money as you can, and you move on. So we've signed a, a deal with a machine uh, reseller. So the nice thing there, if you're in the same position, is when the reseller sells it, if there's a loan, they'll pay off the loan. The rest of the money either goes to you, but you're gonna have to recoup, uh, I think it's um, recapture. So you wrote off the whole thing, but then you sold it, you get money back, well, you're gonna owe that taxes back. But when you go through a machine dealer, they hold on to that money, it never touches your hands, and you can put that as a down payment onto the next machine, and that's exactly what we did with Ellison to get our new Doosan to replace this in just a few months. So that's it for this episode. Hope you learned a lot. In the next episode, you're gonna to start to see us 
configure the shop. I'm gonna go over the layout that we did. And in future episodes, the build out on both the north and south side of the building, it's gonna be amazing. So I highly recommend that you subscribe, hit that notification bell. It's gonna be one of the first to watch it. So until next time, go innovate your production.